Hi guys. So this video is to accomplish starting to understand how do we dissect the textbook. So this textbook isn't always the most friendly, especially if you're like me and you're a simple person who just likes to understand things at a more basic level. Um, it can be really hard and scary. And a lot of times if you're starting at the beginning of a section over a topic and then, um, you know, kind of trying to figure out what the heck's going on, it can get really overwhelming. So hopefully this power, uh, power, uh, not power, Point, but um, this video will help you to better understand those next steps to take what helps me because I'll kind of show you what I do um, when I was starting to dissect this because I know a lot of times that y'all probably think that us as nursing professors know everything and we've seen that every single one of these things and we know the textbook answers but a lot of times we don't we have to kind of relearn you know um, this stuff ourselves so this is kind of what I do especially when I'm reading a section that I'm like what is this talking about? So first, I want to kind of show you, I have this pre-class sheet, and I think this is, I'll post this on the Google Drive, and this is a great place to get started um, if you're trying to figure out, like, okay, where do I get started with reading? So, um, you know, uh, these are the kind of questions before coming to class, like, these are the questions you should be able to answer about the disease processes we're going to talk about. Um, so what is it? What will a client with this look like? What are my overall priorities or goals for this client, and what am I going to do as the nurse to help meet those goals? Am I going to administer treatments like medications or other therapies? Am I going to do nursing interventions like assessments and other things? Um, and how will I know a client is getting worse or better? And what will happen to show me that there's a problem that I need to do something about? So this might seem like a lot, but let's kind of break this down. And I'm going to kind of show you an example of how you can go about doing this. So most people, when they're reading, this is your textbook, and this is page 509, where we're looking at tuberculosis. So most people, when they start, they're going to start at the beginning and try to figure out what is it. But I'm going to give you a little tip here. And this is something that worked out really well for me. And you can always try it and see if it works, even if it sounds a little crazy and you're like, I don't think that's going to work for me. Give it a shot. So I actually start not by at the beginning, but I go all the way down and I keep going until I find the section and I'm going to have to go change pages. I'm going to find this section that's called nursing management. They don't have this for every section. So I'm going to show you in a minute um, how to do it for one that doesn't have one of these sections, but all the big disease processes have this nursing management section. And I'm the nurse. And when we're testing you and when you're learning, it's not learning how to be a doctor or analyze this at a doctor level. It's learning how to be a nurse, recognize nursing assessments, recognize nursing interventions, treatments that you're going to need to watch for effectiveness as the nurse nurse. So um, we really want to focus on that nursing section. So what I do to start, even if I don't know what tuberculosis is, what I do to start is I come to this section and I'm just trying to get a sense of what are, what's the big deal? What's the so what? And I can do that by looking at my diagnoses, my planning, and um, my evaluation that's here at the end. So here, I'm just trying to get an idea of what is this? So it's saying here that nursing diagnoses for TB, whatever TB is, I'm gonna maybe have problem with breathing, airway clearance, infection, and maybe education is gonna be a priority. And then here under planning, it says that I want them to have normal pulmonary or lung function. So already, even if I didn't know what tuberculosis is, I know it has to be do something with the lungs and it affects their breathing. Um, what do you call it? Uh, adhere to therapeutic regimen. Well, that's a really fancy way for saying that they take their medication. So um, apparently there's going to be some sort of therapy or treatment that they're going to have to adhere to um, and um, take appropriate measures to prevent the spread of the disease. And that kind of goes with this must be an infectious disease. So I'm already like breaking down stuff here. I haven't read anything about what tuberculosis is. I know it's something about the lungs. It's an infection and it messes with breathing and it can spread to other people. So I've already found, um, you know, a lot about it. And then down here under my evaluation, it says that like my overall outcomes or what I'm hoping will happen to the patient is that they, the disease goes away, um, that their lungs have normal function, that they don't have any complications and they don't spread it to other people. So I need to write this down, like, cause this is the thing, instead of trying to read this whole section and be like, okay, um, like as I know, like for me, when I first started learning, like I always use, I, I love concept maps, but I was always looking at the concept map the wrong way. I was always trying to um, like, you know, just write exactly what my textbook said versus really trying to say like, what is a whole, is this, um, what's the bigger picture? 
picture here. Like, what am I trying to do? Now, if I just look at a disease process and say tuberculosis, it's a infection of mycobacterium tuberculi and blah, 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 you know, like figuring all that stuff. Here's the 15 symptoms they can have. Here's the um, 15 drugs they need to take. Like, I'm going to memorize that, but I'm not going to really understand what the big picture is. But if I start looking at this disease process, not as, hey, it's, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's this, that lung disease, that what am I, what's my overall goals? And that here, um, like, you know, looking at this evaluation, I'm going to frame everything I learn around what my goals are. So let me give you an example. So if one of my goals is to have normal lung function, um, as I'm reading this, um, the rest of this section, like reading this nursing section, which again, this is where I start, um, I'm going to be looking for anything in here that's going to tell me as the nurse, what am I going to do to help get normal lung function? Um, what do you call it? So um, as a whole, uh, what do you call it? what I'm going to do? And I can kind of pull up like we have our like little pre-class sheet here. So let, let me kind of show you as an example. Let's say that I was starting with tuberculosis, tuberculosis, and that my goal one is to have normal lung function. So then I wanna be answering these questions. So um, what do you call them? I wanna think about like what assessments am I going to do? What interventions am I going to do? Um, what do you call it? How am I going to know this is getting better or worse? So as a whole, like as I'm reading, if I know one of my goals for tuberculosis is normal lung functions, when I go back to that first section um, and I read about what clinical manifestations there are, I'm going to be looking and okay, well, if there are normal manifestations when I get this is that they're short of breath then what am I hoping for? If I'm hoping for normal lung function, how am I gonna know that they're getting better or worse? Like what, what, what are their lungs gonna sound like when they're getting better? And what are they gonna sound like when they're getting worse? Um, what general assessments am I gonna need to do? What are they gonna complain about in the beginning, but that I hope would get better? And things like that shortness of breath and stuff that they might have in the beginning. But effectively what I'm trying to get, cause hopefully I haven't lost you at this point and you're like, what's this crazy lady talking about? But what I mean is, is if you start at the end and kind of start with what are my goals goals are and then work your way backwards. And if you understand things by overall what your priority is, no matter what we put on the exam as an answer choice or when you take your NCLEX that you have as an answer choice, it's not about memorizing a bunch of little facts. It's about understanding the bigger picture that when you look on an exam and you have four, ch four choices and you know that your priority is normal lung function, that you can look at those choices and because you know that's a priority, you can pick out a right choice regardless of what choices we put there. So instead of trying to remember a bunch of scattered facts about a patient, what I'm hoping to you'll get from this video is that you can kind of start to learn how do I um, go about looking at this from a more global nursing perspective versus looking at it as a bunch of um, pieces that you have to put together. Um, so we're trying to look at it and bring it together. So getting back to kind of where we're at, I said that I always start the nursing section. I look through the diagnoses, the planning, and the evaluation to try to see like, okay, um, you know, what is the big picture here? So, so far we have discerned that we have a lung disease. It's infectious. It can spread to other people. It affects their breathing. Um, what do you call it? And they're going to have to take some sort of medication where they might need some education related to it. So then I'm going to kind of look through here a little bit and start looking at some of the things I'm going to do as the nurse. I don't have to write them all down. Look, there's a lot in here. And that's the things I think that when most students start reading, I'll, I'll speak for myself. When I was a student, I wrote down every little thing. You should have seen my notes, like every little inch of my paper was filled out. And in reality, that just doesn't really always work. And most of the time it doesn't. You have everything written down and maybe you're getting some of it, but it's too much information. I only need to write down what has to do with my goals. So as I'm reading through here, um, I'm going to look under, um, what do you call it? Um, da, 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 da. I'm going to look under uh, this acute care. Um, so it's saying here that they need to be placed in airborne isolation. So that, that means that, that, remember we talked about earlier, one of my priorities is um, in um, things I'm worried about is spreading this disease. So as the nurse, since this is one of my big things, if it's, if it's brought up in the diagnoses, the planning and the evaluation, because remember, 
I don't want this transmitted to other people, then this is going to be a big thing. So this is going to be one of my priority interventions is that in order to help meet my goal of not spreading tuberculosis, I need to put them in isolation. Um, what do you call it? Um, da, 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 da. I'm reading a little bit further, kind of skimming through this. Um, da, da. This is kind of talking about what airborne isolation looks like. Um, and so here, so it said education was important. So another way that I can help them so they don't spread the disease is teach patients to cover their nose and mouth with paper tissues every time they cough, sneeze, or produce sputum. So that's another way that they can prevent it. So here's something I need to teach that's also going to meet their goal of not spreading that. Tissue should be thrown into a paper bag and disposed of within the trash or flushed down the toilet. So another way I can help. Hand washing. And again, you don't need to write out these full sentences. And when, you, when you're writing notes, when you're reading in a book, you should write them in your own words. Even if it's kind of a struggle, you need to make it make sense to you. The more that you put it in your own words, your own language, the more it's going to make sense to you. And this might seem really simple. Hey, there's only so many ways to say um, dispose of in the trash. Uh, what do you call it? But find a way that makes sense to you. If you write it in your own words, you're much more likely to remember it than versus like, I remember this one word in the book, like you can't remember everything that's in the book. And uh, most of the time on the exam and in the NCLEX, it's not going to be written word for word from a textbook. It's going to be written in a way and you're going to be like, well, I didn't know that that was talking about that. Um, but it's really, if you can start to kind of look at this from your own perspective and uh, what do you call it, really start to write things for, that are gonna be helpful for you to remember these things, um, you're gonna see that um, those things clicking and sticking with you a lot easier. So, um, and then it's saying like minimize prolonged visitation, um, you know, uh, all right, so yeah, so little things like that. And then it's also just talking about here, um, about adherence, like, so I'm kind of like, pretty much what I would be doing is I'd be writing out the things that we talked about, those four things that we talked about, um, we don't want to spread it. We're worried about their breathing. Um, we want to manage that infection. And then knowledge is important. So I would just write those out on a piece of paper and then write what are the interventions that I'm going to do to help that patient. So I've already started here. And again, I know this is going to seem crazy, but start at the end. Start thinking about what are you going to do as the nurse before you even figure out what this is figure out what you're going to do as the nurse. What are your overall priorities? Because look, look what I already know about tuberculosis now. And I didn't even know what it was before I started. So let's say that I've got that down. So I'm here and I've kind of got the um, overall picture that this is an infectious disease. It affects breathing. They're going to have to take some medications. There may be problems with compliance and they need a lot of education. So that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. Now this book can, this is where the book gets really overwhelming. That nursing section can actually break things down a little bit better than most sections, but there's a lot of stuff. One thing you guys need to remember is that this is not a pathophysiology class. You're not taking this class to learn and break down and be like, oh, you know, this is how to, um, uh, what do you call it? This is how the bacteria gets in this part of the cell and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not what you need to know. You just need to know what you need to know as the nurse. So what are you going to teach a patient? I'm not going to sit there and go into, um, I'm not going to be like, sir, um, you have mycobacterium tuberculosis. Um, and like be reading like word for word, like there's a 7% this incidence and that like, no, I don't need to tell a patient that, but they just need to know what do I need to know so that, the, um, what do they need to know so that they can um, understand their condition so that they don't have complications. Um, so uh, what do you call it? So all I'm gonna do here is kind of just try to break down. I'm gonna try to pick out keywords. So remember, this is still, we're doing the reading that we're doing before class. You don't need to do heavy in-depth reading before class. You'll get yourself confused and you will waste a lot of time. It's better to start by just getting the basics and then come to class and they'll bring it more together. So tuberculosis is an infectious disease, okay? It usually involves the lungs, but can affect or, um, other organs. Now that the key word there is usually involves the lungs. So like, I wanna know what's common and then what's deadly. So it commonly affects the lungs. So it looks like it's a infectious lung disease. That's all I really need to know. Um, it's saying maybe it happens more often in poor people, homeless. Okay, cool, moving forward. Um, the etiology and pathia, uh, pathophysiology, I might, I'm going to skim this very basic, but again, this is not a patho class. I just, I, if I want to understand how it, I do want to understand, because remember my priority was that it can spread. So I maybe want to know a little bit more th about that. So it says here, it is usually spread from person to person by airborne droplets, huh? That's why they were talking in the nursing section that they needed airborne isolation. So it's telling me now it's reinforcing what I already read in that last section by seeing that it's airborne. So here we go. So we're going down farther. 
Um, now it's getting into these tables. Now, sometimes these tables are really great, but I got to tell you, these tables confuse the heck out of me most of the time. So most of the time I skip them and, uh, you know, classification of tuberculosis, like usually we're not going to be classing them. We're the nurse. We don't need to classify them. This seems like a doctor level. So um, now I'm going to get down to, um, after I kind of figured out general, what is it? Who's at risk? How does it spread, et cetera? Because I and I only really need to know if it's spread, if it's an infection, but um, I'm gonna get down to clinical manifestation. Now, this is something that's really key because this is where a lot of people struggle is they get to clinical manifestations and then they start writing down every single one of these. And so, like it says here, um, there's a dry cough, um, mucoid or mucoprelate sputum. Now, if I, uh, if you come to me and say, I need some help and you're writing down mucoid mucoprelate sputum, that's where your problem lies. I would never write this on a concept map because that doesn't make sense to me. Like, so what does it mean to have mucoid or mucopurulent sputum? It means yellow green. So yeah, like, you know, like trying to break it down. Now, if you don't know that, don't feel bad. It's okay. I didn't know a lot of that stuff before I started teaching and I'm not even teaching, but like, you know, before I went to nursing school, and so, you know what I do is sometimes on my notes, I'd have a little box on the side and I'm like words to look up and I'd have to look it up. Or if you're getting stuck, like let's say like this tuberculosis one, like it's pretty simple, it's an infection, but maybe you're reading about a disease process and you're like, God, I just don't understand this. Like you're reading it, but it's not coming clear. Stop, put the book away, go watch a video about it. Search for this, like search for tuberculosis nursing on YouTube and you can find a lot of stuff. My favorite are Simply Nursing, nursing.com. I like Khan Academy. Academy, osmosis. Those are some of my favorite um, videos to watch when it comes to breaking down what is it because they keep it really simple. Um, but there's a ton out there. A lot of people like that registered nurse RN. Um, so feel free to watch any of those if you think that they're going to help to like break it down. But if you're sitting there and getting just confused and wrapping around reading five times the same sentence and like, what does this mean? Go watch a video about it. You don't have to watch the whole video, but just watch enough to you kind of get what is it because that's all you really need to get from this beginning is what is it. So anyway, back here. So we're back at these, like they have these like big fancy names. And then look, here's a bunch of symptoms, fatigue, malaise, anorexia, unexplained weight loss, low grade fevers, night sweats. Now, most of the time when I ask students to show me their concept maps, they're going to have every single one of these. Cause I know what you guys are thinking. If I don't write down every single symptom, then what if that one symptom is on there that I didn't, I wasn't expecting. And so here's something that you should know is that like a lot of these are saying the same thing. So versus like writing down all of the words that are here in the book, which most likely would not be on the exam. What does this client look like to you? So look, fatigue, malaise, uh, what do you call it? That's saying the same thing. They're weak. They're tired. So like I'm imagining, I'm creating an image in my head. I, if you're a visual person, you can even draw it out. Someone who's really tired. Anorexia, unexplained weight loss. They can't eat. So they're tired. They can't eat. And then low grade fevers and night sweats. So they're sweaty. Tired, can't eat and sweaty. That's what I would put on my notes because um, here that's going to kind of break it down in a way that's going to make a lot more sense versus looking at it like, oh, what are all these symptoms? Um, and then here, like you look for some key words when you're reading some of the symptoms. Dyspnea is a late symptom. Anytime you see something's early or late. So like here that says the primary initial symptom is dry cough. So I would probably want to differentiate, hey, early is a cough, late is, is the dyspnea, or I would say can't breathe is late. Cough early, can't breathe late. Um, and so, um, and also saying is hemoptysis, which is bloody sputum is a late symptom. So I would just want to differentiate those because that's a lot of times where you need to know because if a patient comes in and they just have a dry cough, they may be early in their illness. But if a patient comes in, they can't breathe and they're coughing up blood, that's going to be your warning sign. Hey, they've had this for a little bit. They could be really sick. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to skip this box because it confuses me. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm going to skip the complications, even though the complications is a great um, place to look for what's the worst thing that can happen or what are the symptoms that there's a problem. I'm also going to skip diagnostic studies. I found, I used to tell students to kind of try to generally look over these, but I found that these are really confusing. So I think these are better picked up in class. You can look if they have a table like this and kind of says generally what you're going to do. It looks like there's a skin test, some sort of blood test, a chest x-ray, sputum culture. I might write some of those down, but it's going to make more sense when I'm in class, um, you know, um, kind of learning about these. But Again, you know, anytime when you're looking these, um, when you're looking in the book, the key words they always want to be looking for um, are going to be um, like this. So culture is the gold standard for diagnosing TB. Anytime you see that something that's a gold standard, 
that's what you want to know because look there's a whole bunch of different tests you can do but i want to know whatever the gold standard is because i want that gold <laughs> i want that a on that exam so the gold standard is going to help me get closer to that it's not that you don't need to know about the other ones but i need to understand this one probably the best or know that it's probably the first thing or the most um the most um uh, reliable thing to go by so um i'm gonna then i'm gonna just generally look over treatment so it looks like da, 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 that they're going to be treated with drug therapy so there's a bunch of drugs here i'm not going to look through all the drugs i'm gonna look especially if there's a lot of them if there's just one or two okay i'll kind of look in general but i have an infection so obviously these are going to be some sort of anti-infective drugs so i'm not going to get through all of this and kind of you know get myself crazy um but like kind of knowing in general that there's going to be a variety of drugs um, and I prepare myself emotionally for class <laughs> when we have to go over them. But you kind of see that's the place I would start. And I know this probably took a while for me to get through, but when you're actually doing it, it hopefully wouldn't take you this long. So again, you start at the end and you want to start with, um, you know, like, what are my, what's my overall picture? What am I worried about? What are some of the big things? Look at that planning, um, look at that diagnosis section and look at that outcome section, um, diagnosing, like nursing diagnosis section um, and the outcomes at the end of that nursing section and try to just break down what's the big so what like what are what are the general um what's the general picture there when you come back to the beginning figure out what is it um what do you call it? what is it going to look like and remember in your own words and be looking for those keywords early late gold standard um what do you call it? common deadly like you're looking for things that are going to um, like really different like those common things that are going to really differentiate um, and then I'm going to just generally look at what kind of treatments as the nurse I'm going to be giving these drug therapies and so as um, these when you're when you're starting to study drugs and I'll put a different video about how to study medications but when you're studying drugs like remember we're always thinking about them from the nursing perspective you don't always have to know their deep patho but you need to understand what you need to know to safely and effectively give that um, so kind of going back to our initial thing we want to figure out what is it what will the client look like? And remember in your own words, what are my overall priority goals? And then like, what am I gonna help? So again, you can kind of like write out those, like I told you for the, for like tuberculosis, there's the four big goals. Then I can write those out and say for each one, um, what kind of um, education, what kind of assessments, what kind of treatment am I going to do? And then I wanna know what, how will I know they're getting worse or better? And we kind of already found, found that out when we went in the clinical manifestations, um, you know, um, they're gonna be getting better if their um, you know, symptoms are starting to improve. Um, and then we're gonna know they're getting worse if they're starting to have the dyspnea, um, blood in their um, sputum and uh, things like that. And we can also find out more, like I said, under the complication sections, cause it's gonna tell us more like here, chest pain, fever, cough, presence of pleural effusion are common. So it's saying like, here's some things that could happen, but I'm not going to get too in depth into that. I just want you to kind of get a basics. If you can do that for, um, you know, the big disease processes we learn about in class, you're going to come to class really prepared and feel better as you're moving forward. Cause you're starting to kind of, you're not just coming in with no information. You're not coming in with too much information that you already have it all jumbled in your head and you can start kind of putting this together. So try to look at these more as overall outcomes, goals, and priorities as the nurse versus looking at them as a bunch of disease processes that have all these 50 different pieces that you have to piece together. And hopefully that'll help get you started so that you can be successful in reading this textbook, even though it's so confusing. I hope this was helpful. See you next time.